have the first ever Power Wheels only overland adventure coming up. And for that, we are building a trailer with a roof tent, and we think this might be our start. If you may remember, we used this trailer to tow around the Camaro with the Barbie Jeep, and now we're gonna turn it into an overland trailer for the Colonel. Obviously, you know, a roof tent on this would not work out very well. You know, we could build a structure to support it, but if we put it up there, like, you'd climb in and it would just tip over because the suspension's super soft and it would just like, wouldn't be great for sleeping. So, we also need to haul a bunch of gear. Most of the vehicles going probably aren't gonna be able to haul much gear, so we'll haul as much gear as we can on this. So, you know, we'll make space for like a cooler and some camping supplies and stuff on here and then like another platform up here that the roof tent can sit on so we can sleep in that. We decided to go with the old tires from Sendy because they'll be the easiest to fit and they'll make it ride the most level and uh, you know, we have them. We thought about using these giant bead locks from the sprint car, but they're so wide, they'd stick out super far and make it wider than necessary, which would suck on narrow trails. So those, as cool as they would be, are out. The easiest thing to do here is to just take the whole axle out, cut it in the middle and lengthen it an inch or two uh, to clear all of the stuff there with the tires. And since these tires are so narrow, they'll still be within the fender and not stick out too far. lengthened axle in and it's just perfect I think. The tires stick out a little bit past the edge of the fender but not much and we have plenty of extra clearance on the inside and uh, turns out I accidentally made trailer safety chain hooks on this. I had those holes punched in that bracket just for looks and because I like punching holes in brackets uh, and those work nicely for the trailer chains. And I just went out to the scrap pile and found a couple of old semi-worn out shocks from some car or other, which still have a good bit of damping ability left in them. So I might just throw those on the axle under there so that our trailer doesn't bounce around every time we hit a bump. Overland trailer has shocks. Um, obviously they're really long because they're from a car, uh, so they're at a pretty extreme angle compared to the axle, which you know reduces their effectiveness a bit, but still better than no shocks. Also, um, they're on the back because that's the side of the spring that slides. So the front of the spring is just bolted solid uh, around the bolt, or it's wrapped solid around the bolt, and then the rear here, you can see when it compresses, it slides back and forth here, so that means that it'll slide backward, which is the direction that it'll push the shocks. Can you see the shock compressing if you look under there? Yep, a little bit. Cool, well, that's something. Why we're building a trailer for the roof tent instead of putting it on top of the uh, Jeep because this thing's huge. 
This is awesome. Exciting times. I think it's hilarious that both of us have been like camping and living in vehicles and all of that sort of stuff and like all of that for years. And we finally get a roof tent for a Power Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is definitely gonna be the first roof tent overland trailer Power Wheels situation. Straight up ARB, <laughs> legit. Yeah. So it is time to get back to work on the Overland trailer for Colonel Senders. Um, we have the steel that we need to build a frame to hold up the roof tent. Um, but before we get into all of that, I want to actually like tow the trailer around and see what it feels like to tow with it. Um, so for some weight, we're going to strap Sendy onto the trailer and tow it around because why not? safe to say that works really well. First step is figure out exactly how high we want the tent. Um, obviously, if we put the tent down here, we wouldn't have room to store anything else. Um, so we need space for stuff underneath it, like the cooler. If I cut the four uprights um, around 30 inches, that should be a pretty good amount of space underneath it. Got some handy dandy new tools here for fitting together pieces of pipe from Centurial Tools. These adjustable angle um, magnet holder things. Yes. <laughs> well, Ethan's inside of it and it's not tipping, so that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, it's actually, and like when you're in here, if you have your feet at the back, which would make sense, like it's quite stable. Yeah, it's got this built-in pad. Oh, it's so nice. It's gonna be the comfiest camping ever. Yeah. 
So this tent is awesome. I think it's gonna be perfect for the uh, overland trip. I mean, obviously it's gigantic, but like we're gonna be comfy. And uh, the whole trailer setup totally works. Right now, the way it's sitting, it's definitely a little bit downhill this way. But, um, you know, with a couple people in there, most of your body weight's gonna be at the head end. And we'll have a bunch of weight in the trailer here to help weight it down, because that's really the reason it's, you know, hanging that way. And also we can always just park on a little bit of a slope to counteract that, but it's, uh, it's really coming together. I got the cooler on there. Got the shovel. I thought about making mounts for the shovel, but honestly, these zip ties are so good, there's just no point in making a mount because the shovel weighs almost nothing. The high lift jack, I made some solid mounts with wing nuts so it doesn't rattle around. Um, and then on the back here, I got a mount for the good old Pulaski, very versatile tool for overlanding. And it's just got one little zip tie which the reason I'm using these also is because they're removable. They just have a little tab you pull and then you pull them apart. But I made a little steel bracket there so I can just sit in there and the zip tie just keeps it from rattling. Well, got about everything I can think of thrown on the trailer. Um, obviously the ice chest isn't full, but we've got all sorts of crap on there. So we've got it all strapped down and we're gonna go drive around and see how it feels. surprisingly well um, again the gearing on this is rather high for trying to pull a trailer and that is probably more weight on the trailer than this thing weighs so uh, or pretty close to the same anyway so you know it's a, it's a lot of weight for it to pull but it does it quite well I think it's gonna do well and uh, that means we're basically ready to go power wheels over landing it's gonna be a truly legendary trip worthy of this thing's legendariness <laughs> because uh, Steve Hessek is coming with his uh, Land Rover Power Wheels that you've seen on our channel. Um, Mike Moto Mule, we just did a feature on his Grave Digger 4x4, four, four he's bringing that. And uh, Chris from Rutherby Welding is bringing his uh, Ninja Powered Grave Digger. And of course, we'll be taking this and Sendy. We're gonna do it all without an actual support rig uh like we we thought about maybe taking the tacoma or something like that to carry extra gear but that would kind of defeat the purpose of overlanding so everything that we're going to need is going to be hauled by the vehicles going and they're all going to be power wheels or uh we're taking a couple of atvs just because we don't have enough seats for everyone who's going in the power wheels obviously for the camera crew <laughs> for the camera crew exactly and uh we're going to go out for two nights three days hopefully we make it that long without breaking everything. <laughs> That's why we're doing a lot of testing on all this before we go. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. That's gonna be, I think it's gonna be one of our best videos ever and just an epically fun trip. So next up, Recluse Clutch, another radiator and some lower gearing. <laughs> 